Good evening, dear friends. What a privilege it is to come again to share the the thought of the day with you, and this is the thought of my life that I want to talk about just briefly tonight. I just finished listening to or listening to a radio broadcast with a couple of young men. One is already a minister, and another young man aspiring to be a minister. And what a blessing! What a blessing that radio broadcast was. Uh, both young men. You could, you could hear the fire and the zeal of Jesus in their voice. And I just thought, how precious, how precious the body is. But you know, dear ones, the, the one thing that God touched my heart about, and, and I want to speak just briefly about, is you, if you are a Christian, you are part of something much bigger than yourself. And it, it's true, and, and I'm ashamed, and I know it at a at times perhaps you are that we forget we're part of a body uh, we, we tend to be self-centered and selfish and and only see our problems or our needs or our burdens and that's what Satan wants us to do he wants to blind us from the fact that you are a part of something so much bigger than yourself that it boggles the imagination you and I are a part of the precious body of Jesus Christ and those two young men I was so proud of just listening, and, and I, I sent an email, and, and I want to do everything else I can do to encourage those young men. I can remember what it was like when I was young and first felt the calling to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Trying to find a speaking engagement or trying to find someone to encourage you was like pulling teeth. It was really, really hard. And you know, I think it's still that way to a great extent. Uh, seems like people are jealous of their platforms that God has given them or of their churches or whatever and, and they really just don't have much of a desire to help someone else along the way it's because they don't understand that they are part of the body of Jesus these other young men and young women they are a part of the body of Jesus Christ we must encourage one another that is probably one area of the church that is the weakest is exaltation to exalt to lift up one another to encourage one another while it's called today send an email send a postcard send a letter pick up the phone and call them let someone today know that they are loved and that they are appreciated and that they are so special there's not another person like you anywhere in the entire world the circumstances the events the situations that you've been through in your life that you have gone through have made you special Jesus made you special to fit in that one and only place in the huge body of Jesus the only one that will fit in that slot made for you is you. Oh, how precious. Though there be billions in the body, Jesus has prepared a place for you that no one else can fit. He's given you a job that no one else can do. You are necessary. You are needed. And you are loved. I love the body of Jesus. I love the body of Jesus. No matter what part of the body you may have been called or chosen to be or participate in, I love you, dear brother, dear sister. Because without you, the body would be crippled. Without you, the body would be diminished. Oh, I yearn to see the fullness of the body of Christ as the bride comes forth, as the body comes forth, undefiled, not crippled, not handicapped, not missing limbs, not missing a heart, but a bride, a body of Jesus, full of love, full of the anointing of Jesus, a bride longing, longing to embrace her husband and calling him forth. To come for her. Oh, dear friends, we're standing upon the threshold of that right now. We're standing upon the threshold of the return of Jesus Christ for his church. But what part of the church are you? Are you yearning for him with open arms? Are you loving the body? Are you encouraging the body? Are you sharing with the body? Are you being part of the body? Are you being part of the blessing? Or are you being a part of the problem? Dear one, especially in America, it is so easy to get caught up in our own things that we forget that we are a part of something so much bigger than us. 
that our problems, though they are important to us and though they seem large at a time, they are really small. They are really small because we have such a wonderful, mighty God. Dear one, God will meet your need. He's met my need over and over and over and over, and not one time has he failed not to meet the need. Dear one, your Heavenly Father loves you. He knows what things you have need of. And I need not go to Matthew, Mark, and quote the scriptures about the birds of the air or the flowers of the field. You already know those, but perhaps you haven't grasped them to your heart. You're a part of a wonderful body called the church. You are a part of a fraternity and fellowship of brothers and sisters that Jesus cherished so much that he suffered and shed his blood and died for. Oh, it just wells up within me. Reach out to someone today. Reach out to someone every single day that God gives you and encourage them. Oh, it is so easy to get discouraged in this world, dear friends, whether it be through sickness or financial difficulty or marriage problems or relationship problems, uh, mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, uncle. Uh, maybe it's your job you're having difficulty on. Whatever the situation is that Satan is throwing at you today, I want you to know that in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I declare the power of Satan coming against you broken. I charge the angels of God in your life to put a hedge about you and all that pertains to God that has been placed in your care. And in Jesus' name, I command the peace and the healing of God to flow through your body, to flow through your body right now, that you would be touched and filled with the fullness of Jesus, that you would feel his presence right now. And that as he fills you with that presence and that warmth and that love, and as he breaks and destroys those yokes in your life, I pray that that peace of a being a part of the body of Jesus will burn deep into your soul, deep into your innermost being, that you would come to the point that I am, that you and I and all of the church would realize there's only one thing in life that is truly number one. That is Jesus. What has he called me to do? Why am I here? And being busy. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And you don't do those things that I've asked you to do. I'm convinced better things of you. I'm convinced that you have a yearning and a burning to do those things that God has chosen and called you to do that no one else can do. Dear brother, dear sister, it's time to come out of retirement. It's time to, to leave uh, hiding in, in the home or staying away uh, from church because you were injured or hurt years ago or because somebody said, he said, she said, he did, she did. And so you've, you're hurt and you're angry and you've left fellowship or you've left the church. Dear one, you are needed where you belong in the body of Jesus. Come home today. Be encouraged to come home today. I love you. All of us make mistakes and all of us say wrong things from time to time or do wrong things, but there is a mighty God in heaven that loves us and forgives us. Dear one, receive the love of Jesus. Receive the mercy and the forgiveness of Jesus. Come home. Come home. The body needs you. God bless you. Have a good evening.